Today we're back with another Chef Tips episode. This is Chef Tips number... Chef Tips number six. You're probably wondering, how on earth did we get to Chef Tips number six? Well, if you only follow me on YouTube, what are you doing? You need to go and check me out on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. I've got loads of other Chef Tips where I teach you things that I've picked up over my time at culinary school and at the hotel I used to work at, so go ahead and check that out. Anyway, today we're looking at steak. Now, a lot of people really don't get steak. They just think that steak is just a piece of meat that you just sort of pan fry and, and call it a day. Really isn't the case. And it annoys me sometimes. You go to a supermarket and they sell just the biggest piece of muscle no fat whatsoever just a red piece of meat and call it a steak you need to look at quite a few things when you're looking at steak you need to look at the marbling of fat this is going to ensure that your piece of meat is tender and not really tough like a piece of muscle and I mean there's so many different types of steak my favorite type of steak is a ribeye just because it has lots of fat running through it but a lot of people like different things the sirloin is another popular one and of course you have the fillet which is the sort of king of steaks and there's also a lot of cheaper cuts of steak, like flank steak, which is used a lot in like fajitas and stuff like that. But the point is, whatever you do, when you're buying beef, make sure you're paying the right money for steak. Because often I've seen butchers, especially in the Arab and Asian community, they sell a piece of meat at like a ridiculous price and it really isn't steak. So don't be fooled, do your research, know what you're buying when you're buying steak. The next thing, when you buy a piece of steak and it's just pure red, just come off the animal, don't cook it straight away. Often if you like steak and you go into a restaurant and you see this has been aged for 28 days, obviously it's hard to replicate that at home for 28 days because that has been controlled in an environment suited to the beef. But what we can do is try and achieve that in a basic sort of way at home. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my piece of meat, as you can see here, it's very red and sort of like fresh from the cow. I'm gonna salt it very heavily. And what we're gonna do here, is going to leave it in the bottom of our fridge so that there's no cross-contamination and just let it sit there for two to three days. I know it sounds like a long time, but trust me, it's fine. The salt is gonna extract that moisture out, slowing that sort of bacteria consumption. Often the bacteria will latch onto the moisture on the meat. By drawing that moisture out of it, you're intensifying that flavor. And after a couple days, you're gonna take it out and see how beautiful it is. So it's gone so much darker. It will start to have a slight funk, a slight smell that you associate with dry aged steak. So often when you go to a restaurant, you pay an extortionate price. At least you paid £3.50 for this ribeye. And I've been able to achieve somewhat of that smell and complexity that you get from dry aging. So that's a little tip for you guys. Heavily salt it, leave it in the fridge for a couple of days. It will extract the moisture, intensify the flavor and make the smell so, so good. So yeah, now that you've done that prep beforehand, it's gonna really help. I know it seems a bit extra, but trust me, do it at least overnight and it's gonna really do wonders. What we're gonna do then is take our steak and pat it completely dry. This is something really key. I always see people making steaks and they look gray on the outside when they're cooking it and that's because it's moisture. If you don't want that gray sort of exterior, if you want that golden crust, your steak needs to be completely dry. So pat it down dry with some tissue and we're gonna season it. It's already got a lot of salt left over, so just brush off some of that and crack on some pepper. We're then going to cover this with oil. Some people put oil in the pan, I prefer to put oil on the steak, but make sure you season it first, that way the oil will cover the seasoning and not sort of like wash it away when you put the seasoning on top of the oil. I would personally use a neutral oil like groundnut or rapeseed or sunflower oil rather than olive oil because it might burn. So I'm gonna put a bit of sunflower oil on top of this and just cover the whole thing round. So once you've seasoned it and oiled it and everything, you have to make sure that the steak has actually been left out of the fridge for at least about half an hour. You can't put a cold steak onto a pan and expect it's going to be perfect. I know this seems like a lot of prep, but I'm just telling you, if you want the perfect steak, just follow this advice. I mean, often people go to a restaurant and they order like a rare steak, for example, and expect it to come out really quickly. Not the case, right? Because you have to leave it in a sort of room temperature environment for a little bit. Otherwise, if you cook our steak rare, the middle's gonna be cold. So with that logic, we have to keep our steak out for a little bit so that it cooks nicely in the middle, not just on the outside. Then we're gonna get a frying pan and we're gonna heat it to the highest heat possible. You want this pan to be absolutely smoking. I know it sounds counterintuitive. You think that it's gonna burn. Not the case. Just have it on a high heat. You wanna to start to see smoke coming out of the pan. When you see that, you're gonna take your steak and lay it away from you until you hear this beautiful sizzle. You're only gonna flip the steak once it starts to naturally release itself. If it starts to stick, just leave it. You're gonna leave it, don't touch it at all. Take it and flip it once and let it form that crust on the other side as well. Thing is, because these steaks are so thin, I'm not gonna butter baste them, so what I'm gonna do is just sear them for one and a half minutes on each side, add in the butter, rosemary, and garlic, and then just sort of use that butter to flavor it. It's not really gonna cook it as such. 
To be honest, a lot of people always wonder how am I going to get the steak to the correct level of doneness. And to be honest, that's not something I can really tell you. It just comes with experience. Even I'm not very experienced at doing it myself. But with a little bit of practice, you'll kind of get it. And then the key thing is to take it off, let it rest completely on a chopping board. And now I don't want to make this too scientific, but if you imagine like a dishcloth, when you wring it out, that's like the strands of protein in the meat. So as you cook a piece of meat, you're wringing out that protein and all the moisture is coming out of it, right? So if you're then just gonna take that and leave it and put it on a plate and eat it, the protein is still gonna be quite constricted so the meat will, won't be as sort of soft as you want it. Also, as you start eating it, the protein is gonna start to unravel and all the liquid's gonna come out onto your plate. You don't want that at all. So what you wanna do is let all that liquid come out onto the board. So you're gonna let your steak rest on the chopping board. You can put your rosemary, uh, garlic, and your butter on top just to let that flavor infuse. And once that protein sort of unraveled, sorry this way, unraveled and relaxed, like your dishcloth, imagine it unraveling and it relaxes, the excess sort of um, liquid from within that steak will release onto the board. And then after about five minutes, I'd say, you can take your steak, carve it up, and it's gonna be so beautiful. It should be really nice and blushing and amazing. And I mean, when you see a steak like that, all you can say is, Lord have mercy, that is what I'm talking about. So guys, please, if you like this video, if you benefited from it in any way, please give me a like, subscribe, and follow me on my socials at sliced underscore IT on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, everything. I'll see you next time, bye.